All right, so here you can see the car as the customer ran it. We're gonna start on the front end with the hood. Al Watson from Race Louvers is doing his normal thing where he's gonna do a couple comparative runs. The stock hood, or I don't wanna say stock hood, the hood that is on the car, you can see has a good amount of louvers here and I, I believe that center vent, the intercooler is moved to the front here and is, is trying to um, you know get air out of the engine bay. We can see a top view here so, you know, looks like a good amount of uh, louver volume, I'll call it. The placement is a bit off. So we ended up getting a stock hood. Um, it's blanked, so this is mimicking our baseline run at this point uh, with no louvers or nothing. So we got our numbers from this setup, which allows us to compare the original hood to the race louver setup. As you can see, they're much more centered behind the radiator, which is what you want for cooling. And here you can see them from the top. And if we go back to the original hood, you can see volume-wise, this might actually have more, uh, I'll say, open area for air to escape. But like I mentioned earlier, with the louvers kind of being off to the side, they're not as effective as the center here. So even though the original hood, uh, with the amount of louvers it had, uh, it picked up 20 pounds of downforce uh, over the stock blanked hood. Race louvers picked up 26 pounds, so, you know, good gain. And if you watch any of our previous wind tunnel videos, you know that we put pressure probes in front of and behind the radiator. Um, picked up a little bit of cooling capacity as well. So that's all I'm going to get into on louvers. Al Watson at Race Louvers does a really good job updating his website with a bunch of data. So I'll put a link down below that will take you directly to the um, Subaru louver page on his website bunch of good data there so definitely check that out all right so from there we jump to the rear of the car and it's a little hard to see but in this picture there are vortex generators across the top uh they're gone on this one uh let's see well, there you go so you can kind of see what we're dealing with across the top here so we ran vortex generators with the wing. Obviously the, the run just prior to this was no vortex generators, so that would be our baseline on this one. And <clears throat> let me be very clear with my phrasing on this. How we landed on these vortex generators, I'll put a link to the yellow Mustang that we did in the wind tunnel. We tested, I think about seven different types of vortex generators. Uh, some commercially produced ones, uh, some that Al made himself, um, counter-rotating, <laughs> counter co-rotating, different heights, different angles. And the ones that are on this Subaru, I don't want to say were the best of them, but I will phrase it as they were the least bad of them. Hope that makes sense. Now, if you watch that yellow Mustang, the rear glass on that chassis car is not very steep. So we were kind of, you know, we we kind of knew they maybe wouldn't be the most benefit, uh, if you will. Um, so this is our first time. Subarus are just known for their kind of steep rear glass. And we didn't have a ton of time in the tunnel this day. So we took the best ones from that run and tested them on this. And the results were, so so I'll call it on the wing run we have here um, they ended up increasing drag um, and we lost about a half a pound of downforce so it's a lose-lose situation on this one now if we go to so this run right here with nothing nothing is our stock run we also did some spoilers um, this is a little tiny one inch guy did add some downforce, uh, was actually fairly efficient uh, at about a 10 to 1 ratio from the change of spoiler to no spoiler. And we also added a larger spoiler to kind of see what that would do. Its efficiency dropped. Uh, now granted, we're only trying two different shapes or sizes. You know, there could be some little sweet spot in there. But this is one of those funny ones where the efficiency dropped, but if you need more downforce on the rear, short of going to a wing, 
the larger spoiler obviously made more downforce but it was less efficient i think people kind of always think more efficient means more downforce and that's not true so we got some spoiler test now funny thing is the one inch spoiler and the three inch spoiler are the same exact spoiler we tested across multiple cars now they've shown up in other videos so again trying to like limit variables but at the same time can you kind of tweak or fine tune or with a slightly different shape yield different results i'm sure so yeah spoiler did pretty much exactly what we were expecting it to do and we also tried vortex generators if you look at the top here so no generators and generators so this is where the vortex generators get a little bit interesting i'll say it did lose about two pounds of drag but it also lost about three pounds of downforce so you know we're, we're talking very small numbers here a very unique case they might be worthwhile but uh i still haven't seen it all right now jumping to my favorite part uh the wings now this car has our apex 8 wing on it the uprights were done by the customer himself uh so it is mounted quite high setback is about normal uh nothing nothing crazy uh but again being such a steep roof on this car higher is better cars like my gt350 right behind me here with a much more gentle sloping roof you don't need the wing as high to get it in clean air <clears throat> when we showed up in the tunnel i'll put a little clip up of the wool tufts the wing was at 18 degrees now that is much higher than um we would ever recommend now to the customer's defense he was at a track event he added some stuff to the front of the car if i remember right needed a little bit more out of the rear his only option at the time was to just throw a little more wing angle at it but as you can tell by the wool tufts the air is separating off the bottom of the wing uh very badly if you watch the wing you know we went from 18 degrees down to 10. now that reduced the drag by 21 pounds uh, which is quite a lot um, and we only lost 14 pounds of downforce now I've done this in the past I'm gonna throw myself under the bus that is a 0.66 to 1 lift to drag ratio extremely extremely bad <laughs> um, now again like I mentioned we knew stall was happening on the bottom of the wing uh, severely <clears throat> so I'm not surprised it was that terrible but stick with me a second because we'll get to the good numbers. So we went from 10 degrees down to 5, but with a gurney flap. So if you watch the end plate move, you can see, so that's 5 degrees of angle. But if you watch like across the middle of the wing, with the addition of the gurney, you know, the, the trailing edge height is about the same. So going from 10 degrees with no gurney to 5 degrees with gurney, the car only picked up about 3.5 pounds of drag, um, but it picked up 58 pounds of downforce. Um, so that gives us a efficiency change of 15.6 or so to 1. Um, so, you know, quite efficient gain there to run the gurney flap on this wing. You, you get rid of all the stall. It works the wing a little bit harder. Um, now, on this particular car, we didn't do a gurney, no gurney run, uh, but we have on my GT350 along with others. And the gurney flap, let me, let me be correct here, a half-inch gurney on a 72-inch Apex 8 adds a little bit over 100 pounds of downforce. You know the gurney flap is definitely a good addition to the apex 8 if you need it now that might seem like a lot we've actually tested wings with a half inch gurney and have seen more than that uh, we've also tested wings with a half inch gurney and have seen much less than that um, i guess a couple factors go into play there but you know a gurney flap can totally transform a wing or the condition the wing is in uh, such as uh, dewey subaru right here so at five degrees with the gurney, it was still actually overpowering the front end. So we ended up going all the way down to zero degrees with a gurney. 
So if we use that as our baseline number to jump to a no wing run, so in this case from the previous one run to this run, the only change is we remove the wing. When we, when we remove the wing, we lost 280 pounds of downforce and 13 and a half pounds of drag. Uh, or if you went the opposite way, no wing, you put the wing on as it was in the previous picture, we would have gained 280 pounds for a 13.5 pound drag penalty. And if you do the math on that, that is 20.7 to one lift to drag ratio or efficiency if you want to call it that which is extremely high. So that's kind of why I didn't mind sharing with you that 0.66 to one when the wing is already in stall conditions. You know, you're not really doing much with the wing, um, but you know, bring it down to its proper operating range and you end up a little over 20 to one lift to drag ratio. So our little Apex 8 wing, extremely efficient wing. We've tested plenty of wings now and a comparable wing to that efficiency wise was around 21 to one, but that wing maxed out at like 150 pounds of downforce where we're making 280. Um, so keep that in mind, efficiency, but you also need a wing to be in the range of downforce to balance out your car. All right guys, so there you go. Uh, Subaru and the wind tunnel. Didn't have the most amount of time in the tunnel with this one, but still uh, a bunch of cool runs with spoilers, vortex generators. Uh, again, Al Watson at Race Louvers doing a bunch of his hood louver stuff. So down below, I'll put a link to his website, uh, my website. And if this is your first video with us, Al Watson and myself joined forces to start a company called Track Arrow Consulting. If you want us to go over your car with a fine tooth comb, let you know what can be improved on. A link to that will be down below as well. So that's where we're going to wrap this one up. As always, guys, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next one.